when we think about those kinds of numbers, one in three, then I also think about, uh, well, who are these men? You know, when I think about answering the call, I think that men have a role to play in addressing issues of domestic violence in our community. Answering the call to me means uh, listening to people in my life uh, that I have hurt, uh, to recognize that there are things within me that I'd like to change and uh, to start doing the work that can change those things. My relationships with women were super broken. I realized that by respecting and caring about the experience of women, um, at least as much as I care about my own experience, my relationships would get better. I would commend any man who looks at that and says, the way that I learned how to do this is hurting other people. I think the pathway to being a better man is to create relationships around yourself where there's no room for violence even to be considered. What can a community do for these young men to, to tell them that it's not okay? A real man is being compassionate, loving, caring. Truly uh, and genuinely listening like to my partner and to my children. I'm with my wife and my daughter and my son and making sure that I'm showing them a healthy relationship from the past that I have. The biggest thing in my life has been engaging in the Emerge uh, program for men to end domestic violence. It's uh, an incredibly transformative opportunity. I mean, it's hard work. For me, facing 50 years of growing up and thinking a certain way and realizing that that wasn't a way that I wanted to continue being, uh, trying to find tools to, to change that, it's a challenge. Men's violence against women really is, is foundational. I mean, it starts from when I was little and growing up in a house where domestic violence was very prevalent. You know, the, the trauma that our moms have gone through. Seeing my mom cry, you know, daily because of what my dad had done to her, uh, seeing her, her beat up and emotionally just down and hurt. Their own sadness, disappointment, frustrations, depression. My daughter, she just runs to me every day and hugs me and hi daddy how was your day daddy and giving my wife a kiss and and her just being there and asking how was your day my mother wouldn't ask my dad those questions i rarely saw my mom and dad kiss you know because of her feeling uncomfortable around him and i remember one of my first workshops this guy had put his hand up he leaned over and he pointed to his ear and his whole exterior of his earlobe was missing and he said, this happened to me while I was in my mom's womb. You know, his first experience of his dad beating the crap out of his mom was when he was inside of her still. And now here he's sitting in a workshop for hurting the woman in his life. really boils down to making a difference in the community where we know there is a great need. I think as women, we need to give each other a helping hand when we can. When a woman came in battered when we had our day off, and that was really the beginning of the beginning. And so we just kind of decided to start formulating a plan on, on what do we do who know nothing. Uh, the store is open to shop in and we also have tables out for um, snacks and just trying to make it kind of a real relaxed um, ladies only just to try to build up some trust. It's amazing how people just go on with their lives and they don't they don't really know what people have been through and since we've started um, bringing awareness and talking about it a lot more, the stories have just poured out. Maybe if there's something that is going on in their home, um, then they will um, be able to talk about it a little bit more and then we can connect them with the people who know what to do. <laughs> Thank you.
recognizing and identifying like my own patterns of abuse, perpetuating violence against women. I thought it would be really important to like share that with young people. Something as simple as the conversations during lunch, um, they, they, they just sound and look really different. Um, and some of the young men like holding each other accountable, calling each other out. Where young boys are getting messages other than the message that they're receiving right now, which is to man up, right, right. To, to suck it up, to stop crying, to stop complaining. Mm -hmm. What does it mean to be a man and being in the military and what kind of messages do you get about being a man? You're definitely a part of a, an institution that is very hypermasculine. The hypermasculine culture um, and changing, it, it's a thought pattern. And a lot of work that I'm in, I am trying to debunk 18 years of learned behavior. And when you're entitled to something, when someone does tell you no, you combat that with, oh no, you mean yes. And then we come out of the military and we might be doing things that are actually creating risk for our families and, and hurting our families. Instead of creating risk for your families, how do we go about creating safety for your families? But I'm challenging you right now to buck that system, to step up and say something when you know in your gut is wrong. When you see something, you see your teammates out doing something that you know not is, that's not right for you to say something and do something. The need I see is moving those men from like identifying that it matters to saying, I can do something about this. Tina was one of a kind. She was funny and she was compassionate. She was loving, she was caring, and she was the glue that held us all together. She was very special to me because she was like a daughter. So Tina was in a relationship with the father of her children for about 10 years. She no longer wanted to live in fear and live with abuse. And so she decided to leave, and that's how we lost her. She was murdered um, by the father of her children. I feel sadness. I have to funnel that anger and that sadness into what I do now, which is advocate speaking, to help victims of domestic abuse that are still alive. We are working very hard to end domestic abuse. Her death and her murder is not gonna be forgotten. When I think about healing for our community, I think it has like everything to do with, with vulnerability. There would be groups of men hosting regular spaces for men to support one another about their relationships to women. I think when groups of men have that conversation, their entire community is safer. Their kids are going to be safer. Their partner is going to be safer. The lives of our children would be changed. And those cycles of, of violence uh, that we could end will pay us dividends then into the generations that are to come. The world I hope for, uh, for my daughter, is a world where she doesn't feel uncomfortable walking at night. And for a man to look at her with the respect that he would look at his homeboy or his mother or his dad. Uh, that's the world that I hope for, for my daughter. If Tina were here right now and she had an opportunity to speak to me, and speak to her daughter, she would say, Thea, I'm very proud of you, and keep doing what you're doing. She would tell them each she loved them very much, and to be strong, and that mommy's always with them, and they will know. <laughs>